Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, please subscribe and click the like button uh, and share. You can share my videos. That would be awesome. Um, Trump's legal team slapped with $50,000 fine. Uh, last week, the judge overseeing the failed lawsuit brought by former President Donald Trump against Hillary Clinton, the N or the DNC, and others sanctioned Trump's legal team for their role in the now dismissed suit. U.S. District Court Judge Donald Middlebrooks wrote in his Thursday ruling that the lawsuit consisted of political grievances masquerading as legal claims. He said that this was not a case of incompetent lawyering, but a deliberate use of the judicial system to pursue a political agenda. Judge Middlebrooks ordered the law firms employing Trump's legal team to pay 50000 in court costs. He then sanctioned Trump's attorneys, Peter Tickton and Alina Heba, ordering them to pay $16,274.23 in legal fees to Charles Dolan, one of the defendants named in the dismissed lawsuits. Middlebrooks accused Tickton and Haba of knowingly misrepresenting the facts in the lawsuit, which he described as a 200-page political manifesto containing factual allegations that were either knowingly false or made in reckless disregard for the truth. In his astonishment, Middlebrooks wrote that the Trump legal team had been warned about the lack of foundation for their factual contentions and chose to turn a blind eye toward the information in their possession. He wrote that Trump's team failed to conduct a pre-filing inquiry into the allegations made against Charles Dolan and continued to advance Trump's false claims based upon nothing but conjecture, speculation, and guesswork. In September, Middlebrooks dismissed Trump's federal lawsuit alleging that Hillary Clinton, the Democratic National Committee, and others, including Dolan, harmed him by falsely linking his 2016 campaign to Russia. I did a video on that, accusing Trump. In his dismissal, Middlebrooks ruled that the case has no merit and contained fatal substantive defect, defects that preclude plaintiff from proceeding under any of the theories he had pre presented. Alina Hava has said at the time they would be appealing Middlebrooks' dismissal. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's Habba, H-A-B-B-A, Habba. Last Thursday, Habba said Trump's legal team would appeal Judge Middlebrook's sanction ruling. Well, we'll see how that goes. My goodness. Now, I don't know what this one is. Trump's enemy had reported dragged away. Trump's enemy as reporter dragged away. Now, I didn't look into this. No, but I'll check it out. Some guy who showed up at events and records himself shouting at people had been forcefully removed from a recent event for the shouting at Trump's former National Security Advisor, John Bolton. Taylor Hansen, who bills himself as an independent reporter, posted the video on Twitter showing him shouting at Bolton, demanding to know why people should trust him since he lied about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, war crimes in Afghanistan, and praised the arrest of Julian Assange, A-S-S-A-N-G-E, Assassinage. Hansen was removed from the event. Boatley jokingly told the audience that this was another example of the First Amendment at work. I asked at AMB John Bolton why he lied about WMDs in Iraq, covering up war crimes in Afghanistan, celebrated when Julian Assange was arrested. I was immediately detained and removed from the event. Well, see... He was digging in where he shouldn't be digging in. 
Of course, since the point of the stunt wasn't to get answers from Bolton, but to get retweets on Twitter, Hansen accomplished his goal. Hansen uh, later told the Gateway Pundit that when he, he read when he read that Bolton would be speaking in Irving, Texas, I couldn't help myself. He decided he would confront Bolton for lying about weapons of mass destruction and covering up war crimes in Afghanistan. Regarding Julian Assage, Hansen said that it is Bolton who should be locked up, not Assage. Adding journalism, journalism is not a crime. No, it's not. Yes, journalism is not a crime, but going to an event to shout at someone because you have an agenda is not journalism. Well, that's right too. <laughs> See? <laughs> There's always a negative fight in the positive, isn't there? <laughs> Hansen told the Gateway Pundit blog, blog that he was going to file a police report against the staff at the event for assaulting him. Taylor Hansen, not to be mistaken, for the singer Taylor Hansen, has made a reputation for himself as a cell phone reporter who deliberately provokes his subjects until he is physically removed. Well, that's not right. During a Beta O'Rourke campaign event earlier this month, campaign staffers gave Hansen the bum's rush when he tried to pull the same thing on their candidate. You know, that'd be a good way to end up in the hospital, wouldn't it be? Mm, or worse. He gained notability after the January 6th riot at the Capitol, appearing on Fox News in Instagram Angle, where he claimed Antifa infiltrated the crowd and caused the riot. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. He gained not notoriety. I missed out on this one. <laughs> Boy, I hate missing out, don't you? <laughs> he gained notoriety after the January 6th riot at the Capitol, appearing on Fox News, Ingram's Angle, where he claimed Antifa infiltrated the crowd and caused the riot. Oh, mercy. Mercy, mercy. What will these people do to get a story? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, this one here is really sad. But thank God he made it. And I have three of them. But this is odd how this happened. Are you ready for this one? Puppy. P-U-P-P-Y. Overdoses. First responders jump into action. Firefighters rescued puppy who discovered a fennel patch. That deadly drug, fentanyl. But here's something I did not know. Maybe you all did, but I didn't know this. No, honest, I did not. First responders from the Cold Water Firefighters Local to 2555, 2555 in Michigan rescued a puppy that dug a fentanyl patch out of the trash and overdosed. But this wasn't from a drug pusher. Uh, what do I want to say per se? Is that the right word? Because this is something that's new to me. That's what it's used for. Everybody probably knows it but me, but that's okay. The owners of the puppy, named Whip, rushed her to the fire station, knowing the firefighters had the drug that could save her life. The firefighters administered two doses a next naloxone, nalox, N A L O X O N E, Naxalon, Naloxion, or Narcan, N A R C A N. That's Naloxion, Naloxion, or Narcan to the puppy, reviving it. Posting on Facebook. Coldwater Firefighters Local 2555 said puppy overdose rescues aren't the sort of call they normally expect. I guess not. Fire Chief Dave Schmalch told
told WWMT that the puppy was shaken and drooling when the owners arrived at the station, showing all signs of a phenol overdose. Ugh. Why would anybody want to get on that drug? Ooh. Schmaltz admitted that he didn't expect the pup to survive. But once they administered the Narcon, N-A-R-C-A-N, the puppy was bounding around like nothing happened. Schmaz, Schmaltz said that the canine was running around being okay then. The canine overdose was 100% accidental, the fire department said. The pup's owners are not drug users. Instead, the fennel patch was legally prescribed by chronic pain. Now, that's like marijuana was prescribed for cancer patients. So it's no matter where you look, these drugs that are being admitted to patients in pain are still killer drugs out on the streets. <sighs> I'm not going there. I have so many questions. Phenol patches are prescribed to all opioid tolerant patients who require daily round the clock long term pain management. Most commonly those suffering from cancer and patients in hospice care. Each patch is worn on the skin and is generally replaced every three days. Whip got hold of a used patch that had been thrown out. Fennel patches can be deadly to children or small animals if they make contact with the skin or are ingested. Excuse me. Even if they make contact with the skin? The Food and Drug Administration has warned that prescription fennel patches can be deadly even after they have been used. Patients using the fennel patches are instructed to flush the used patches down the toilet rather than toss them in the trash. Schmaltz told WWMT that fennel patches still have up to 50% of the medication on them, even after three days of use. Whip the puppy is being monitorized, moni monitorized but appears to be removing recovering well after her accident. Bless that little puppy. I hate to think of what a kind, all kinds of uses those patches could be used for now that I read this. Don't you? Oh, I hate the thoughts I'm having right now. Even touching the skin can kill a person? Then how do these people wear it? Taped to their skin that have cancer? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I'll have to maybe check into it. But I don't like the sounds of this article at all. When one little patch that was worn for three days is still deadly. That little puppy could have died. Oh my God. And this fennel's killing people in the streets. Oh, I'm moving on. I'll be back. I hope that you had a blessed, blessed day. That you gave somebody a blessing. Because you are a blessing. I'll be back later.